The second advice is for the U.S. administration, and this is maybe a good opportunity to be here because, I mean, they did the same thing. They said, okay, now we have this regime, the Islamists, so we will side with them because they are the, the one in power now. And they went to embrace very fast, and they said, okay, because otherwise if we don't embrace with them, then they, they might be, we have a, they will side to the other side, they will go to Iran or to the extremists, and we need to care about these two files, Iran and, uh, and, and Israel, these are the most important files. You know, I love America, but not because of Iran and Israel. You know. <laughs> I love America because America stands for uh, democracy, freedom of speech, uh, separation of church and state, uh, 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 the, the rights of opposition to be uh, to oppose and not to be uh, attacked and, and jailed and all these issues. So apparently all these issues were lost in the discussion. Never mentioned, you know, you made a deal, they made a deal without preconditions, you know. So my advice to them is, okay, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but... You know, you, when you make a deal with someone, you should just put the preconditions for this deal, which means we tell them, okay, embrace them, but tell them, don't forget, we are. you need to protect democracy, you need to protect uh, the women, the minorities, the Christians. And uh, to my colleague, Amr Hamzawi, I, w I hope in the future when you talk about non-Muslims, you say Copts, because we are proud to be Copts, you know. And uh, But the definition of Muslims and non-Muslims, it doesn't really speak to, uh, to my religion, you know. So just say the word cops, because we are the Red Indians of Egypt, you know. So we, we want to be called by our original name, you know. So my advice is to, to both this administration and to Muslim brothers to look to our neighbors in Turkey and say, okay, What's wrong about this model in Turkey? Personally, as a Christian, I would be very happy to live under this model. I, I, I acknowledge the fact that Egypt is a majority Islamic country. I acknowledge that very much. All my friends are Muslims. I grew up in a Muslim home. Uh, all what I don't want in the end is that if I'm competing against the Muslim Brotherhoods, I'm classified as anti-Islamic. You know, That's the big dilemma we have today. And when one party in Egypt went and said, we will do the, I think they made the, the, the Christian Brotherhood, <laughs> the party. It was a joke because, I mean, we actually, the cops have always been very careful to be classified as Egyptians first before they are uh, cops, you know. So there was a third advice, but I was uh, trying to, I, I have to give that to the, uh, uh, a few minutes also, is to the liberal uh, secular forces. They are all unable to unite. And the reason of that is purely personal ego-centric leaders. You know. So each one wants to be a leader of a gang instead of being a one front and, and putting the interest of Egypt, the interest of having a very solid, strong civil opposition or partner with the Muslim brothers to promote Egypt, and therefore, we are losing uh, in weight because we are totally fractioned, because everybody wants to be a boss and everybody has his ego. And, and if you watch the ego center, the ego map of all these leaders, you know, you find that we will not get anywhere until these issues uh, vanish. And we all unite in order to balance the situation in Egypt, in order to have a balanced state in the end and not another Iran. Thank you very much. With the nameplates taken away, I'm Kurtzer, this is Suiris, just so you know. Uh, let me, uh, as you gather your questions, uh, let me take the advantage of uh, being the moderator to ask the first question. On an issue that you uh, touched on, but uh, didn't focus on, and that is the economy. Uh, we all know Araskom, we all know Mobile Neil, how successful this was, we know the power that the Egyptian economy started to demonstrate uh, in the last decade. And we now have seen two years of um, reversals, uh, a major drain on foreign exchange, uh, all the labor troubles. Uh, can this economy dig its way out of these problems 
even while this major debate about the direction of politics is taking place? I think there's an, uh, an issue here which maybe you don't know here in America. I mean, you don't know exactly uh, what is happening in that area. The problem now in Egypt is that post the revolution, uh, there was this uh, jailing of all these ministers, pre-Mubarak ministers, and it was done in a way uh, that personally I know for sure many of these ministers were innocent. Uh, many of them were thrown out into jail because uh, the general in charge at that time was, did not like them even during Mubarak, and they were like, and the judges, get, some people got, like the Minister of Finance got 30 years for using photocopying paper and uh, approving a uh, uh, car license numbers for, uh, for the Minister of Interior. 30 years jail sentence. So many of these sentences were done uh, in, in, a, in a vindictive way. And the problem we have today that even till today, every day in newspaper, uh, we have a legal system that says anybody that didn't like anybody can just write a letter to the district attorney's office and say, I am accusing Mr. Saviris of so, do, 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 do. Then I spent two or three years of my life trying to prove that all this is false, during which your money can be frozen, during which you could be actually prevented from traveling, and in worst case, even jailed, until you prove that you are innocent. So this has been done to uh, Emirati investors that came and took land based on a price that was announced very transparently, the Saudis too, Egyptians too, and there was a kind of revoking of all this process by telling them, no, it was too cheap, you need to pay more, and so on. So this whole environment of accusations, uh, prevention of uh, traveling, uh, freezing of assets, revenge to the past, who is the investor that wants to go and invest in such a climate? So there's no way, uh, nobody wants to say that loudly because every, every other businessman in Egypt that I know is under the carpet or trying to hide. He wants people to forget him that he's rich and has the money. So, I mean, but uh, this is the real problem today, to answer you, unless we uh, uh, for, uh, forgive and not forget, I'm not saying forget, but forgive, unless we put this page behind us and take the South African model where people were pardoned for what they've done, they've, and we close this file, and we return to a stable, uh, legal environment where people are not prosecuted based on just uh, any kind of, uh, we change our laws to, the, the law of uh, financial transaction is dates to the 60s, during Nasser. So anybody that gets accused, gets prevented from traveling, jailed, frees his assets, and all that. So unless we get out of all of that, we will not be able to proceed, and our economy will not find new investments, and nothing will improve. That's number one. Number two is that uh, all these unions and labor unrest and strikes, they need to understand is you can't come and ask for money when, you, when, when the owners are broke. So they are all coming today to the state, which is broke, and asking for more benefits, more salaries, and the same to the private sector, which is right now paralyzed. Like I have, I have a couple of hotels which have, are empty. How can I give a raise to the, uh, to the people working there then when the hotel is empty? And the same applies to everywhere. Too. So we need also to go and talk with these unions and explain to them, give us a year, give us two, until we have a breeze so we can move the country uh, forward. You know. But without these two uh, elements, Personally, I, uh, I believe that any money which will be put will be lost. It's not going to uh, happen. And we need to really to close that door. And I'm, I'm, I can say that because maybe I'm a little braver than others, but others are, are, are not saying that, but this is the real cure for what we are in now. Uh, I would invite questions. We have microphones wandering around, so why don't we start here in the front? The only question off limits is why your cell phone service doesn't work in Egypt. <laughs> it's actually a different question. My name is Osama Hassanin. Mr. Sawiris, which nation is the closest ally to Egypt today who can help in economic development? Qatar. <laughs> but Qatar, uh, because Qatar uh, has been the... Um, there's, a, there's something good to say, that they have been supporting most of the Arab Spring Revolution. And I think 
it will be good to to uh, to, uh, to respect that and admit that this uh, uh, is, is an appreciated effort. The only question is why and at what price? Is there a price behind that? Uh, there is no one, it's just because you want to promote democracy and uh, <laughs> because if this is the reason, then it's good, you know. I don't want to say more than that. <laughs> All right, Ambassador Mack, and then the uh, woman at the red in the back there. Next. <clears throat> Um, Mr. Suarez, I arrived in Cairo in 1964 as a Fulbright scholar, and I have been fascinated by the study of Egyptian nationalism, and I know about the important role that the Coptic minority played in that. Um, and my question is about the new patriarch um, I think he's called the Patriarch of Alexandria and all Africa and the preaching of St. Mark. Um, what sort of qualities does Bishop Tawadras bring to this position and how effective is he large likely to be? 